The lime green walls and the progressive banking are two of the unique features here at the Autodrome Chaudière. Tonight, this quarter-mile racetrack plays host to Canada's short track series, the NASCAR Pinty Series. 29-year-old Kevin Lacroix has been downright ruthless on the nation's road and street courses. The number 74 Dodge has won everything that twists left and right. Where Lacroix has always fallen short was at the Ovals. Last time out at Jucasa, the up-and-coming Quebec NASCAR star would not be denied. With the Pinty's points lead, can anyone stop Kevin Lacroix? Hello everyone and welcome to the True North Strong and Fast. Look at that view from high above Autodrome Chaudière, just outside Valley Junction, Quebec. We're here for the Bumper to Bumper 300, the third race on the 2018 NASCAR Pinty Series schedule. I'm Dave Bradley, along with me is Adam Ross. And Adam, each time we come here to Autodrome Chaudière, the race doesn't disappoint. This quarter mile oval produces tight, close quarters racing. We've never had a boring race at Chaudière. You're absolutely correct about that. And as we take a look at the point standings in the 2018 series so far, it's the 74 of Kevin Lacroix who maintains the points lead based on his win. But he has struggled here historically at Autodrome Chaudière. Seems to have turned it around a little bit. He was practicing in third earlier today. Yeah, he was third fastest in practice. Didn't hold up in qualifying. He only qualified eighth. But that team led by Don Thompson Jr., he's a big picture racer. He'll be telling his driver 300 laps is a long time. Take your time and show patience. Speaking of the E3 spark plug pole qualifying, a new face at the top of the time charts. It was the 47 of LP Dumoulin and the WeatherTech Dodge who turned a lap of 13.193 seconds. That's an average speed of just over 68 miles an hour. He'll start from the pole, and how about that 0-2 carry mix on the outside? That's the first time he's starting on the front row since 2013 back at the old Mosport Oval. Before we get things underway, let's send it down track side for tonight's call. Drivers, start your engine! The field rumbles to life on the front straightaway. It is a hot and muggy day here in Quebec, Dave, but this racetrack Always fun to watch our races on. Good look back to the Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger. We'll have a number of onboard views, including the Rookie of the Year candidate, the 46 of Brett Taylor. J.F. Dumoulin in the Spectra Premium number 04. Pretty good qualifying run for J.F. Yeah, he's done a ton of practice laps here. Of course, they live just down the road in Trois-Rivières, Quebec. There's a good look at Pete Shepard back behind the wheel of his 79. And we'll ride on board with the driver hungry for his first win in the series, Donald Teach. Let's take a look at your Leland starting grid. Your front row, of course, L.P. Dumoulin and the 0-2 of Kerry Mix. Row number two is Andrew Ranger and Donald Teach in the 24. In the third row, we've got Cole Powell with his first look at Chaudière alongside Mark Antoine Cameron. And in the fourth row, DJ Kennington in the Castrol Edge Dodge alongside Kevin Lacroix in the bumper to bumper 74. Taking a look back to row number five, the 37 of Simone Zion Vienne and the 04 of JF Dumoulin. Row six has David Michaud in the 56 and Brett Taylor in the 46. We go to row seven, and what a surprising pair. Alex Tagliani in the 18, Pete Shepard the third in the 79. Row eight has Adam Martin in the 19, and Joey McComb in the 28. And rounding out the field is Larry Jackson in the number one Dodge. Beautiful look from high above this speed plan. The drivers will need to stay patient here tonight. Before we get things underway, let's take a look at tonight's E3 spark plugs race analysis. And there's a lot of different things at play here tonight, Adam. 300 laps, that's 600 times under heavy braking, 25 degrees, very muggy, Dave. And this is a brake race. So we're gonna break around the midway point and Todd Lewis is pit side. Let's see what he's got for us. Guys, a couple things we're keeping an eye on at the start of the race. We welcome back the 56 of David Michaud and the 37 of Simone Dion Viennes, their first events of the season, and also that 0-2 of Kerry Mix. They battled the vibration all year. They did hours of testing this past week through new transmissions and drive shafts at the car. They diagnosed the problem as engine shims. They've been replaced. That car is fast. 
And Todd, you remember how frustrated that team was at Jucasa Motor Speedway? The big smile on Kerry Mix's face after qualifying really said it all here today. The field bunching off, off of turn number four. The green flag is up and we're underway here at Autodrome Chaudier. Gary Mix bouncing off each other for position at the front of the field. Ranger's going to take over second place. LP Dumoulin is checked out. Donald T just trying to get a bumper in there on Mix as well, but Mix trying to get back down to the low side. The top side of this track needs a few laps to really get worked in. And look at how quickly the front of the field goes single file. And this is normal. The further back you go in the field, the more likely you are to still see a couple drivers double file. But at the front, get in line, get to the bottom, and set up your rhythm, Dave. Yeah, it doesn't take long for this race to live up to its name, the bumper to bumper 300, because that's how these drivers are going to try and sort it out, especially in the early going. A big wiggle out of the Leland 0-2 of Kerry Mix. Well, and we're going to see this all night long. You slow down so much into the corner, but it's getting up onto the throttle. You see those cars, you use all the racetrack. You drive all the way to the outside wall under acceleration. So to make a move on somebody, you have much less real estate to work with. So it's the driver that can really feather that throttle and get up to speed that'll be able to make passes. Good battle, a little deeper in the field. That's for 15th spot between the CBRT number one of Larry Jackson, the Johnsonville number 19 of Adam Martin. Both drivers struggling a little bit in qualifying but they know they don't have much time to dilly-dally at the back of the field. The leaders are going to be coming in a hurry. These are two drivers we're used to starting at the back of the field. They don't focus a lot on qualifying setup, but they generally race very well. But it's time to go right away at Chaudière as Cole Powell to the inside of Donald Teach. And you mentioned it, Cole Powell, the first time seeing the track just outside of Valley Junction, Quebec, as he uses Donald Teach just a little bit to get around the turns. But I asked him, Jason, and Hathaway is his coach and mentor on the Team 3 red car. I said, how much does Jason Hathaway play a role in teaching you these tracks? I mean, you have a lot of experience yourself. And he says, it just shows me a few little things. I would pick them up eventually, but it, it helps me speed up that process. Cole Powell came from the monsters of NASCAR. He drove NASCAR Modifieds. Those are beastly race cars with tons of horsepower. So throttle control is a big thing. Precision is a big thing. So I think getting used to these cars is probably easier for Cole Powell than it might be from a driver who comes from a different discipline. with one of the best taking a peek underneath. You saw the Castro Edge dodge of DJ Kennington take a look, and now the three is moving to the underside of the 0-2 of Kerry Mix. Well, it's exactly what we talked about. You have less racetrack to work with, and we rode on board with Cole Powell. You could hear him feather the throttle. He got into the throttle a little bit and then had to wait till the car was straight to really step on it. Saw Kerry Mix in the pits a little bit earlier tonight, and he was uh, limping a little bit, apparently dealing with a little bit of plantar fasciitis, a bad foot, so that might be bothering him later on in this race, but Mix is a tough guy. Once you get in the race car, he's as tough as they come, but right now Donald Teach, and that's a big deal. Look at the damage to the right front of Donald Teach, a little bit of contact, but he's going to need that fender for later. Speaking of Fender, the 17 pokes the Fender underneath the three. That's for third spot. Give it to the Castro Ledge, number 17 of DJ Kennington. Your leader continues to be the 47 of LP Dumoulin, followed by the 27 Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger. Now Kennington up to third. For some of these drivers, this will be their first experience really racing against Kerry Mix on an oval. He's a beast. <laughs> I mean, Kerry Mix is a force to be reckoned with. And there's a great example. Here comes Kevin Lacroix. He has never duped it out with a 0-2 on an oval track. And I'll tell you, Kerry Mix has broken a lot of drivers into our series. <laughs> Andrew Ranger being one of them. I remember the early days of Andrew Ranger coming into the NASCAR Canadian Series. And we were riding on board with your points leader, the number 74, Bumper to Bumper Dodge. 
Brett Taylor in that iRacing number 46, battling with David Michaud in the 56, and the National Exhaust 79 of Pete Shepard. Shepard got up on those rumble strips, and it was a good thing Brett Taylor was there, or he might have had a long slide up the hill. It was a dice for 14th spot. Give it to the 79 of Pete Shepard. Now here comes Adam Martin taking a look underneath the Justin's Rookie of the Year candidate. Well, and they're not far ahead from LP Dumoulin, the leader of this race. So they need to say, oh, in trouble. There is LP. Just about got a piece of Brett Taylor as the yellow flag flies. But that was a near miss for the race leader. And we talked about it. It was time for the back markers to go a couple laps ago. And this looked like just a sense of urgency Let's see on the can... part of the 19. You could hear the hit. That's what, that's what I wanted to hear was the, the contact. And you could hear Adam Martin made some contact. Wow, nice <laughs> job, LP. White's contact, no damage to the 46 of Brett Taylor, so he'll get right it and join the tail of the field. We'll take a quick break, get the lineup sorted. You're watching the Bumper to Bumper 300 Monodrome Show the Air on TSN. Race number three of the NASCAR Pinty Series, the Bumper to Bumper 300 is brought to you by Mopar. We built it, we know it. By E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. And by Pinty's, making great food fun. All lined up for our first restart of the evening. You see a large crowd, the Quebec fans just eating up the NASCAR Pinty Series here this weekend. Great job by Martin Roy, the track promoter, and by Martin from Festi Drag, who's a great host. He's kept the fans in stitches all day long. Green flag once again back up. We'll go two by two in a turn one. P. Dumoulin will once again power off the bottom groove into the lead. Andrew Ranger will drop down into second. And for a little while there, we had a battle side by side. We still do as Cole Powell able to hang up on the high side for third. It was a perfect start for the front row. They got single file in the positions they started. And behind them, Cole Powell trying like heck on the outside. There's the opening he needs. He'll fall down into fourth spot. mention a pretty neat incentive that's been announced here this weekend. It's actually a trade between the NASCAR Pinty Series and the Wheelan NASCAR Euro Series. So it'll be a driver swap, a seat swap, if you will. Uh, it'll be JF Dumoulin running in the Euro Series, and Gabriel Frederick will be joining the NASCAR Pinty Series for the Grand Prix 20 Vier. He'll be running the number 07 Spectra Premium car at GP3R. He's the current points leader in the NASCAR Wheelan Euro Series. That's pretty darn cool. And speaking of JF Dumoulin, there he is up the side of Pete Shepard in the 79. They battle for the 10th position. And it, again, it's time to go. The leader catches the back of the field so quickly, you've got to take advantage of these restarts, get as many spots as you can. If you remember, Tag and Pete Shepard started in the seventh row. Gary Mick started in the front row. And here they are meeting in the middle. And hats off to the Rona EpiPen number 18 of act. Alex Tagliani just ahead of that battle as well. But there again, you see the great crowd here at Autodrome Show de Guerre. And this one of two NASCAR home tracks in the province of Quebec. And promoter Marc Tadoua thinks he would have had many more fans. It's pouring rain all around the racetrack up in Quebec City, which is only about 40 minutes away as Donald Teach gave a thump there to Cole Powell. He'll drive to the inside of the three car. Donald Teach is no stranger to this track. He's driven lane models in the province of Quebec for many, many years, and he makes quick work of the number three of Cole Powell. That's a battle for fourth spot and put the 24 Circuit Acura Chevrolet up into that position. Right behind them is our points leader, Kevin Laquan. He's duking it out with another road course ace, Mark Antoine Cameron and the Pie GM 22. All kinds of sideways. And Cameron, kind of the surprise of practice earlier on this afternoon, he topped the time sheets. And for a guy who is known for a long time as a road course specialist, he really is picking up these ovals pretty quickly. You know, he ran a full series a few years ago with us. He got a lot of oval track experience. He's in good equipment. You give a good race car driver good equipment and the confidence, he'll do all right. And a bonus this time around, he has Scott Steckley helping him out, talking in his ear, which he says is invaluable. 
Good dice there for 10th between the 04 of JF Dumoulin and the 02 of Kerry Mix. There is your leader, LP Dumoulin, at the front. Driver we've been talking about is the 18 of Alex Tagliani. He's currently in eighth spot. Todd, what's up there? Yeah, Dave, an update on that 18. Alex Tagliani and the team not very happy prior to the start of the race. They were extremely tight all day long, but the car is better. Dark, cool temperatures, maybe something's changed a little bit, but they are a little happier now than they were. Still a long way to go, but already inside the top 10. Dave, some guys love show gear, and some just don't adjust to it as quickly. Alex Tagliani and Kevin Lacroix, there's two drivers that, that haven't quite got the the feel of things here to show the speed they do at most other racetracks. Yeah, Alex Tagliani, his best finish was a third here back in 2016, but it's either wreckers or checkers for the 18. Each stop here at the track outside of Valley Junction, Quebec. Look who's coming, though, the 24 of Donald Teach in a car that the crew has named Springsteen. Longtime crew member uh, Dwight has named all three of these cars on the track here today. The 24 is Springsteen, the 18 is Cowboy, and the 22, Mark Antoine Cameron, is Winchester. Winchester, I like that. Wow, Donald Teach, he is really using that right front fender to good use tonight. You can see where it's worn in a little bit, and it exposes you to cutting a right front tire, so he's got to be careful there. But look at this, LP Dumoulin closing in on slower traffic, and look at his rear view mirror. Here comes DJ Kennington. Well, the gap between first and second is definitely getting smaller as the Castro Edge Dodge closes that distance between himself and the race leader as LP Dumoulin starting to look at the back bumper of lap traffic. The field spread out around Autodrome Chaudière, 63 laps in. We're in Valley Junction, Quebec for round number three of the 2018 NASCAR Pinty Series on TSN. LP Dumoulin as WeatherTech Dodge leads the bumper to bumper 300 here at Autodrome Chaudière. It's been a good race so far. Little bit of bodywork damage on some of these race cars, Dave, but that's how you drive this place. Sometimes you need a little bit of help as we're riding with Brett Taylor. And Taylor has struggled a little bit here tonight, currently in 16, three laps down, running with that iRacing sponsorship, which is a pretty unique deal that uh, has formed between CBRT and the NASCAR Pinty Series. Yeah, all of the CBRT teams have some iRacing-related partnerships. I know the one of Larry Jackson, they've got eNASCAR on the side of the cars. A bit of contact between Shepard and Tagliani as they battle for the eighth spot. Shepard really has turned things around since practice. <laughs> I was going to say, that car is working a lot better, but it didn't. And now Dumoulin gets all kinds of crossways as he tried to pinch below the 79, the national exhaust number 79, well, uh, Pete Shepard. Dumoulin nearly passed both of those cars in one corner. It's hard enough to pass one car at a time, let alone two. And you see in that battle as well is the 56 of David Michaud in the car owned by Jim Bray. Good run today. Another car on the move is the Castrol Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington. Todd Lewis is in his pit. Keeping an eye on that 17 car of DJ Kennington. He's climbed from seventh at the start up to hunting the leader, LP Dumoulin. Just talked to his crew chief, Ted McAllister. The car is a little bit tight, but they are pretty happy right now and in a good spot early on. Well, Dave, do you see what he's done? Andrew Ranger always goes to the outside to find racing room up there. He's been running the high groove for the last 20, 30 laps. DJ Kennington has now moved up to run the same groove Andrew Ranger is running, but it's clear Ranger is getting around the end a fair bit quicker than DJ Kennington in that 17, but he can't turn down the banking to make a move. Just the seventh or second start for that number 17 of DJ Kennington. That's a brand new car for 2018 for that team. And it seems to be very, very quick out of the box at a great run at Jucasa Motor Speedway. But an update on your race leader, a 2.3 second lead now for the 47, the WeatherTech Dodge of LP Dumoulin. And as big of a gap as there is between first and second, that's how close things are between second and fifth. Look at that. 
all four of them, two of them trying to make moves. Ranger is just digging, trying to make a move on DJ Kennington, and Cole Powell is caught back up to the 24 tees. Well, you talked about the high line and how Andrew Ranger loves to run it in his Mopar Dodge out there. He ran a late model race here at Autodrome Show de a couple of weeks ago. Guess where he ran the late model? Up in the high line. You know, earlier on, I was down on the racetrack, and they must have been running some drifting shows because there is a layer of rubber, and you can even see it from in the cars where it's darker black at the top. That is rubber that drift cars have laid down, so I almost wonder what kind of grip these guys would get as they venture higher and higher up the racetrack. Now it's Ranger down low trying to get it to work, but he can't get the run off the corner that he needs. Cole Powell dips to the inside of Donald Teach just in behind, so a couple of battles right in front of each other as Andrew Ranger finally gets a fender in front of his teammate DJ Cannington. I don't know if he can do anything with it. I think DJ gave him a break there. I think he let Andrew get up in front of him to see what he can do now that he's out in front. But right behind them, there's Cole Powell and Donald Teach. That's second, third, fourth, and fifth under a blanket here at Show Dead. Powell and Teach aren't going to be as patient following the 17 of DJ Cannington. And already we're seeing contact between Powell and the 17. We're going to have a break in this race at around the midway point where all of these drivers will be able to take on four fresh good years. So we are two-thirds into this run on tires. Things are starting to get a little bit squirrely out there. Tires are getting hot, tires are getting worn out, and so is patience, Dave. It's a little slide of the Castrol Edge Dodge, and Donald Teach in the 24 is going to take advantage. He might use a little side rub on DJ Kennington as he works his way through, but Kennington, it looks like those good years have pretty much given up all the good they're going to give. And you hear the RPM of that engine as he gets on the throttle. It's all over the place. He steps on it, brakes traction, has to lift a little bit. So there's a lot of work being done by these drivers' accelerator foot. Look at the car on the move, though. The number three of Cole Powell is hunting Andrew Ranger now for second spot. Ranger back up in his Captain Highliner pose up in the second group, but Cole Powell is making great gains in the three down low. Kennington back underneath Donald Teach. There was some contact when Teach made the pass on Kennington. Let's see if he decides to return the favor. So far, he is not. Just close door-to-door -door racing by a couple of veterans. And Kennington... Four starts here at Onodrome Ship Chaudière, all top 10. 15 of his 19 NASCAR Pinty Series wins have to come on ovals and news breaking just a little while ago that he will run the NASCAR Monster Energy Cup at Daytona once again for the Gaunt Brothers. Always exciting having a Canadian to cheer for. And Dave, it's worth mentioning here tonight, we're going to have a new winner at Autodrome Show d'Air. In the four previous races, Jason Hathaway won twice, Alex LeBay with a win, Caden Lapsovich with a win. None of those four drivers in action here tonight. The CBRT number one of Larry Jackson just ahead of this battle for second spot between the Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger and the three of Cole Powell. Ranger upstairs. Looks like Larry Jackson sort of running a middle line, and now the, they don't know where to go. It looks like Cole Powell's going to take advantage of a pick being set up by Larry Jackson. Well, Larry Jackson's one of the gentlemanly drivers. He'll always give room, but you, you can't pull off the racetrack and give it all away. He's got all contact. Ranger into Cole Powell. Powell almost stuffed Larry Jackson. That was a nice save by Powell. Ranger trying to open a hole for himself, I believe. Well, when you have to go, you have to go. And Andrew Ranger was obviously a little bit frustrated with lap traffic, is now down a spot chasing Cole Powell. Still your leader is the WeatherTech number 47 of LP Dumoulin, who's nearly a straightaway ahead of this group. There you see him there mixed in with his own lap traffic. Now, this is frustrating lap traffic. When you've got one on the outside and one in front of you, LP Dumoulin doing a nice job, showing some patience as he works the inside of Adam Martin in that Johnsonville 19. Let's listen to LP on the brakes and drop. Michaud, the 56. That's fantastic. You didn't get to hear him much on the throttle, but you could see him punt David Michaud in the 56. You heard a little thump. That's uh, really all it took for the second caution of the evening here in the bumper to bumper 300. We'll have another look. So if it looks the same as it did the first time, he just drives down in the corner. 
much faster than I think he could have anticipated because when you turn someone right there, you make yourself entirely vulnerable. So Michaud with not much damage will refire the number 56. We'll get the field realigned here at Autodrome Show. The air Cole Powell now runs in second ahead of Andrew Ranger. Getting ready for restart number two on lap 124. The number 47 WeatherTech Dodge of LP Dubley has dominated the entire stretch of the bumper to bumper 300 to date. And he'll restart on the inside of the WeatherTech number 47. He runs up the racetrack just a little bit in turn number four. And we're back here in the midway point of this race. with the Mopar M1 spec engine under the hood, gets a little crossways, but gathers it up as he moves back into second spot. Cole Powell didn't get the restart. We're three wide deeper in the field, and it looks like problems for the 74. Yeah, Kevin Lacroix was way up out of the group. I think he's headed to the pits. Kevin Lacroix, your points leader in the bumper-to-bumper -bumper dodge. There is no fire under the hood of that 74. So he rolls to a stop here in the pits at Autodrome Chaudier. And that's and where it all went wrong. He scattered that engine on the front straightaway. See, it still had fire down the back stretch, and then it just shut off. Caution flag. No caution. They, we're yeah, staying say. under green, but the crew has gone to retrieve that car, push him down to the pit area. So we're, maybe they can get this fixed. Of course, coming in as the points leader early on in this season, you're trying to salvage as many points as you can, even when you do have a bad night. And we've got a great battle for the second spot. Andrew Ranger's got it. Cole Powell is applying the pressure in that three machine. Powell running the bottom. Ranger happy to run up top. And I think things are done for the 74. Todd Lewis is with the driver in the pits. Kevin Lacroix trying to muster a smile, but you had a really strong car previously, but the motor has let you down, it appears, tonight. Yeah, just uh, second motor this year. The first one was in practice, but now in a race, it's uh, it's really not bad for points. But uh, yeah, the car was okay. It was not the fastest, but I mean, uh, it was okay for top five, I guess. So uh, yeah, we have to fight back next race. Kevin Lacroix with a renewed attitude in 2018. Um, just sort of taking it as it comes here, obviously a little bit disappointed with this one who's hoping for better things. Well, and that comes with time. Kevin Lacroix is a prime driver. He is a fantastic race car driver in fantastic equipment. He knows when they show up to the next race, they're going to be the car to beat again. And that next race, a street circuit, one of his fortes at the Vinci's Grand Prix of Toronto. Battle for fifth spot beats Shepard. The National Exhaust Ford Fusion is now up inside the top five battling with the 17 of DJ Kennington. Caution, flag flies. Yeah, and it's spinning. a spinning 0-2 of Kerry Mix down the back chute. What a veteran move by Mix. He got the car refired and he knew the leader was coming. Doesn't hurt that his spotter is also his wife, Susan Mix. She's pretty good on the radio. Get going before you go a lap down. Another lap down in his case. Great job by Kerry Mix. We're under yellow here at Autodrome Shojian. Welcome back to the NASCAR Pinty Series on TSN. We're at Autodrome Show de Air, where we're expecting a shootout to the halfway break. Remember, at the halfway mark, we go caution and three laps, and we'll be there. And they word it so carefully in the vicinity of the halfway mark, so it's not a hard yellow at lap 150. Race director Trevor Handley makes that decision. You see a battle for the race lead with Andrew Ranger using that high line to challenge now for the top spot. The first battle for the lead all night long. So Ranger, the only one who's been adequately using that second groove, is now dicing alongside the 47 for the top spot. This a little deeper in the field between the 79 and the 17, a battle for fifth. So this time across the stripe, it will be halfway through this race. It'll be the completion of lap 150. But look at J.F. Dublin. Is that his own race car or a chunk of someone else's <laughs> hanging off the right front? I think it is his fender. Do you can see still this battle. 
battle as Captain Highliner himself goes way upstairs. Andrew Ranger trying to get that run, but he shoots off the corners when he does. A yellow flag has come out. This is the break. That's like watching a dirt race where Andrew Ranger's up shooting for the cushion while LP Dumoulin's down on the bottom. Somebody should tell him that the walls are not the cushion. But time for the BP Racing Fuels race summary at the halfway mark. We've had just one leader all race long. Two retirees so far, Joey McComb and Kevin Lacroix. Still 10 cars on the lead lap, so it's anybody's race. That's for sure, Dave. Pit stop's about to begin, and Todd Lewis is there. NASCAR officials have released the teams. Now they will begin the service. Fuel going in first on that 47 of LP Dumoulin. They will change on four fresh Goodyear Eagles. He is now full of fuel. Want to make sure that his helmet is okay as well. He was complaining about a bit of a comfort issue. The 0-2 of Kerry Mix, they're talking about that car being super loose and also that vibration is back again. They may have gone a little too far on their fix. The 27 of Andrew Ranger utilizing the high line a lot near the end of the first run, they will make an adjustment on the track bar in addition to fuel and fresh tires. Dave, you don't very often see pit stops with the cars nosed into their pit stalls, but that's what the halfway break is like. We've got 150 laps to go here at Autodrome Show Dier. A bird's eye view of one of the finest racing facilities in eastern Canada. Autodrome Chaudière, the field lining back up for the second half of the bumper to bumper 300. LP Dumoulin leads while the number one of Larry Jackson gets the free pass. Now 11 cars on the lead lap. Picking up right where they left off. Dumoulin loves the bottom of the racetrack and Andrew Ranger is just fine running that high group. That's what makes this race for the lead so great. They're so equal. You could drive two cars between the 27 and the 47, and Andrew Ranger takes the lead on the outside. Way upstairs, almost using a third lane, but he shoots off the top side of the corner and into top spot, the first change of the lead so far here in the bumper to bumper 300. And I don't think we'll see Ranger go to the bottom of the racetrack, even though he's leading the race. You can conserve brakes, you can conserve tires by running the high side if you get a good, comfortable rhythm going, and that's what Ranger's done all night. And that's got to be frustrating for the WeatherTech Dodge of LB Dumoulin. His car working so well down low, and then he looks up and says, wait a second, how is he doing that? One explanation for that, Dave, is these are all new tires on all of these race cars. They have to come up to temperature, so none of these cars are working the way they did before the break. Yeah, well, guys, one car did not return after that break is the 46 of Brett Taylor. Had your hands full with this one tonight. What's put you out? I don't know. Something in the suspension was broken. It just be, it was snappy loose the whole time. And finally, I ended up hitting the tag in the wall. So we're not going to keep pushing it. It was just dangerous out there. See you back in two weeks. And, of course, two weeks will be the Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto. But we have a battle for the lead. watch these onboard cameras all night long, Dave. We're on the right side. We're on board with Andrew Ranger. Two grooves up from the bottom. On the left side of the screen, you can see LP Dumoulin inching farther and farther up the race car every lap. So he gets up to the driver's door. Now he's got up to the front bumper. One or two more good turns, and LP might be able to clear the 27. from behind. Cole Powell is back there lurking in third spot. You can see the three car from the back bumper cam. And there goes LP Dumoulin to the lead in the WeatherTech Dodge once again. I can't believe Andrew Ranger even kept that much speed. As loose as he got out of turn four that last lap, that was unbelievable. Now you have Cole Powell, Donald Teach in the number 24, and you have DJ Kennington joining this party as well. We knew this was going to happen. The first 150 laps, are, they're just riding along trying to survive. One back to three, still on your outside, still there. Oh, <laughs> Dumoulin squeezed him up to the wall. Andrew Rainer hanging in there. 
there's a time where the spotter comes in handy, and then there's a time when a driver says, screw this, i got to be clearing. <laughs> Well, you heard the clear, 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 and it was almost a sigh of relief for the spotter saying you finally got it as Andrew Ranger now tucked into a battle for second spot as Cole Powell has jumped up on the inside groove. You know, as these drivers watch this, you do work the tires on a car. We said the outside, you can be a little easier on the tires and the brakes. Not when you're battling like this for position. They are lined up on the inside all the way back to Pete Shepard in the sixth position. So it could be a long fall for Andrew Ranger. How strong is that 47 WeatherTech Dodge of LP Dumoulin powers his way back into the lead. Third here last year at Autodrome Show the Air for that car. A win already in 2018 at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park with Dumoulin showing he can get it done here on the Ovals. It's a new race team this year. I mean, the way he looks at all three races we've been to this season, as well as the 04 GF Dumoulin, as we've got caution on the racetrack. We're hearing from Trevor Hambly, debris in turn number four. Now there's a look at the seventh spot battle between Pete Shepard and the 04 of JF Dumoulin, but the caution will bunch the field once again here in the bumper to bumper 300. We can finally catch our breath. they will be Dumoulin, your race leader. 39-year-old L.P. Dumoulin from nearby 20 year Quebec has been very, very solid. He'll restart here in the top spot of the Bumper to Bumper 300, the third race of the 2018 NASCAR Pinty Series. Looking for green off of turn four, the 56 slow in the top of turn four, and Michaud has stopped. That was our free pass car coming around the racetrack to catch the tail of the field. We're under yellow once again, and Andrew Ranger scored as the race leader Dave. Well, this will be interesting. You see smoke from the number 56 of Michaud from Terrebonne, Quebec. Andrew Ranger scored as the leader because when they restarted that race, Ranger took the lead at the start finish line. Advantage to the leader, LP Dumlin can restart in the vicinity of that restart line right there. That white line, there's a cone in the fence. If he has not caught, come up to speed by the time they get to that cone, Flagman Dan Hawkins waves the green flag whether he's taken off or not. Ranger timed that perfectly, and Ranger was leading. We could see visibly Ranger was leading by about six inches at the line. The Dumoulin crew lobbying NASCAR. They do not like that call. Very much so. It looks like the 27 was on his game. He'll restart on the outside as we go back to green. <laughs> and Ranger chose to restart on the outside this time because he has the right to fire first, and he fired quick. Well, obviously, Ranger would be in that top side as Dumoulin unable to get on the gas at quite as quickly as the 27. And the 47 of Dumoulin is called Powell wanted desperately to get back to that low line. Yeah, Powell is down in that racing groove. Now he'll try to track down Ranger. Mark Antoine Cameron into it with Pete Shepard. Tagliani way slow off of turn two. Couple cars bunched up. Mark Antoine Cameron will take that spot. Still Andrew Ranger at the front. Here comes Cole Powell. LP Dumoulin getting a little assertive on the radio with his spotter, but he needs to know the information he needs to know. And things are dicey down there. Wow, there again, slight contact with DJ Kennington, but LP Dumoulin's night has gone from not so great to worse. Yeah, and for the first time, really, all night long here at Autodrome Show the Air, the number 47 has other cars around him. LB Dumoulin has been able to check out at will. Yeah, and that's what I mean. I mean, everything was perfect, and then all of a sudden they're not. Instead of driving away in the lead, you're barely on the podium. He's got Donald Teach in there. We're riding on board. Mark Antoine Cameron in the Pie GM number 22. He's in sixth spot chasing the 17 of DJ Kennington. And there's a driver we haven't talked about at all tonight, and that's a great thing for Mark Antoine Cameron. He just quietly had a good run, battling for a top five finish. Still Ranger up in that top group, but here comes Cole Powell in the Chevrolet Camaro down on the low side. Good battle for sixth spot now between the 04 of JF Dumoulin and the 79 of Pete Shepard. Seven. They're, yeah, they're actually seventh and eighth right now. Shepard up into the second spot, but JF Dumoulin, he does a great job on long runs on an oval. 
Yeah, he really does. Ran into a little bit of trouble, got shuffled back in the pack earlier on this race. But again, we talked about it. It's a long race. You're, you can settle back in and set your sights for top spot. Currently holding that top spot, though, is the driver of the Mopar Dodge, Andrew Ranger, as we've completed lap 200. With 88 laps to go, the battle for second is raging. The number three of Cole Powell trying to fight off the 47 of L.B. Dumoulin. And I dare say he's trying to fend off an angry L.B. <laughs> Dumoulin. So Dumoulin doing all that he can. I mean, that car barely has a mark on it. L.B. Dumoulin had everything going his way tonight until he didn't. And you can almost see the smoke coming from the driver's side window of the WeatherTech Dodge. L.B. Dumoulin trying to battle up to where he was earlier on. Donald Teach has been solid all night long, hanging on inside the top five of the 24s right there where it counts. And remember, Teach is oval track after oval track. Every week he expects to win the race. He's had a couple robbed from him, and tonight hasn't gone as well as he would have hoped. So he's getting assertive trying to make his way to the front. Oh, he is taking the three of Cole Powell to school here on a tight quarter mile track at Autodrome Chaudière using a little bit of the bumper. That was the school of hard knocks. <laughs> One knock for my hard bumper and there you go. The 18 Rona EpiPen Dar Chevrolet of Alex Tagliani. Some damage to the left front but up and out of the groove as the leaders go by. Tagliani can't see. That trunk of fender is right up the left side of the windshield where a driver would look so he is slow dramatically in that outside group and we are getting reports of some raindrops starting to fall in the area it's just light right now but we'll keep an eye on that as some of the drivers now starting to radio to their crews and we knew that it was a possibility it's been in and out of the area so it was already time to go for these race car drivers now throw a bit more pressure in there for them <laughs> It'll take a while for this track to slick up. It's just really light rain. The tires are up to temperature, which is good news as Kennington battles behind the three of Cool Powell. That's a dice for fourth spot. Kennington up to the back bumper, almost makes contact, but there's lap traffic just ahead. Wow, Kennington right on the back bumper of Powell as Powell slices to the inside of Larry Jackson. Kennington stuck there as he looks for a way by Donald Teach up on the outside of the Johnsonville, number 19 of Adam Martin. And we are still seeing more rain starting to fall here at Autodrome Chaudière. Shouldn't affect the surface unless it starts to come down a little bit harder. But we'll keep an eye on the sky and one on the racetrack and the yellow flag has come up. Caution is for the rain. You can't really see it at track level, but it has begun falling. We fought it all night long and thought the clouds were going to stay back so we could get all 300 laps in. We're currently under caution. We'll try to finish this one under green, but the raindrops falling here at Autodrome Chaudière. Welcome back to the Autodrome Chaudière. NASCAR officials have asked competitors to pull off the track because the rain has gotten heavier once again. Teams have pulled back into pit lane. Crews are covering up the cars. The 27 of Andrew Ranger out in front after 220 laps run. We're not sure if they're going to get this, car, this race restarted because of the heavy showers that are now coming down. Well, Todd, NASCAR has begun the process of track drying, but it might be a moot point at this point time the the rain is falling with increasing intensity and dave we just heard it nascar pinty series race director trevor hambley has called the race todd is standing by in the mopar pit area yeah, they've made it official. NASCAR said that's all. And Andrew Ranger, that 27, <laughs> is going to be the winner here at the Autodrome Show. You, you had that high line working for you tonight. I really try. You know, it's uh, unbelievable. And I want to thank uh, all of my guys, Mopar, John Camillari, my boss, uh, David White did an excellent job tonight. And uh, I was trying on the bottom. You know, my, my crew chief told me to stay on the bottom, but I could, you know. So I decided to jump on the outside, and it's there where my line works. So uh, I want to thank everybody. Uh, my sponsor, everybody support our DJ Kennington team, so it's been uh, awesome. Finally, a, w a win, so uh, very proud, very happy. Congratulations, Andrew Ranger, winner at the Autodrome Chaudière. And the first win for the Mopar M1 spec motor, believe it or not, as fast as Andrew Ranger has been, the first win for that one.
Cole Powell, the fourth place finish. First time seeing the racetrack. Nice run by Simone Dion Vienne in the 37, finishing ninth. Pete Shepard salvaging an eighth spot, too. Let's go down with Todd and your second place finisher. LP Dumoulin will be classified second in this rain shortened event. You dominated in the first half of this race, and we thought you'd carry on in the second half, but what happened on that restart? Well, we had a restart. I'm leading Ranger second, and uh, there's a guy that's a lucky dog that didn't make it to the back of the field. So we don't even complete one lap, and they call yellow. So I'm leading the last lap, and we're not even completing that lap, and now they call me that I'm second. So Ranger takes the lead because he's leading, and then I'm faster than him. We're having a great car. WeatherTech Benmar car is awesome. The guy has been working so hard. We did great. Now we need to talk together with uh, the series and figure out exactly what happened because, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a shame because we had a great night. We led most lap. We had the pole. Just had a great car, a great, great evening. And that is, um, I just can't wait to see exactly what happened. I, I, can't, I can't tell you. It's just, it's okay. Frustrating end for LP Dumoulin. Dave, LP had everything right, except the fact that when you restart the race, they score at the start-finish line, so you've got to race that 50 feet. It matters. And have a look. Things did go right. LP Dumoulin took over the points lead. The 74 of Kevin Lacroix drops all the way to fifth. Still pretty tight in that top half of the top 10. Todd is with a third-place finisher. Here with Donald Tiege, a third place result. This was a race that you needed to have a good finish of at, course, wasn't it? You know, we need a podium and that's what we got. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm disappointed about the, that race because I think at the end we got the car to, uh, to be fast. And, we, you know, the last five laps were faster than the leader. So, uh, and Scott told me that Donald keep ke take, take care of the tire and uh, we're going to go get him. And we were faster than them. But, you know. We're going to win one sometime, you know. <laughs> one day we're going to win one for sure. But, you know, we're very proud. You know, we start the season very bad. So we got a podium right now and focus on uh, uh, Toronto. And uh, we're going to be fine on West, too. You know, we, we work a lot on the car today. And uh, we find a lot of things on the car. So for West, we're going to be very, very quick. Oh, yeah. A lot of confidence for the 24 team as we take a look at your Mopar winning moment. And it's the Mopar number 27 of Andrew Ranger. A soggy victory lane, but he's still all smiles. This NASCAR on TSN event has been brought to you by WeatherTech, the ultimate interior protection for your vehicle. By Leland Industries, a proud Canadian fastener company. And by Honey Goo from Clean Flow, one honey of a loo. Dave, we go from the tight confines of Chaudière to the even tighter confines of the streets of Toronto. The Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto, next up from all of us here at Fuel Media Lab. We'll see you there. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.